Zoom reports the best quarter in the history of enterprise software. Fast launches to bring one-click checkout to the masses, and the creator economy grows up as Patreon becomes a unicorn and new rivals emerge. That and more on this week's PLG123. Let's dive in. So tab one. Tab one is from Zoom's website and is their Q2 earnings data. You might have seen the news about this because this was an absolutely crazy quarter and the stock popped in an absolutely insane way in response. But here's some of the specific data. The company reported $664 million of revenue for the quarter. So you annualize that and that is more than two and a half billion dollars of annual run rate. Obviously that's a big number and impressive, but the growth rate is all the more impressive. 355% year over year growth. This company is at serious scale and is seeing hockey stick like growth that you usually see with small startups. Some analysts were worried about churn following Zoom's COVID spike, but as you can see here, the net dollar retention rate is extremely high and still very much net negative at 130%. And if the revenue growth wasn't impressive enough, the bottom line is absolutely insane as well. The company's free cash flow was $373 million for the quarter. That's right, an enterprise software business reports north of 50% cash flow margins. And as you can see here, that number is up over 2,000% year over year. So not only is this a growth machine, it's a cash printing machine as well. And the stock has responded as you would expect. Zoom is up over 5X year to date in 2020. That means at the beginning of the year, it was already an impressive $20 billion market cap, and today it's well over 100 billion. There's no question that this is extremely impressive. The only question that remains is, what happens next quarter? That's what everybody's wondering, especially stock market investors. Tab two. Tab two is from fast.co and is the launch of Fast as a company and product out into the market. If you haven't heard of Fast before, it's all the rage in San Francisco and is certainly one of the hottest enterprise products to launch into the market in the last couple of years. So as you can see from the animation here, Fast is trying to say see you later to the slow way of checking out on the internet with all the fields, all the forms, all of the errors and all of the differences kind of from site to site. They're trying to make it consistent and extremely easy and fast. If I think about the best checkout and payment solutions on the internet, there's a few things that come to mind. The first is Amazon and their famous one-click checkout experience on Amazon itself, which they've had for a long time. The next is Apple Pay and the convenience of being able to just, you know, put your thumbprint there and check out and pay on various different websites. And there certainly are, as you watch the animation, there certainly are similarities in the, the overall UX and UI uh, and the flow of Fast and Apple Pay. Number three is Shopify and their shop app specifically. So even before the shop app, if you were checking out on various different Shopify sites, it would recognize you from your email address, send your mobile phone a security code, and boom, it would autofill your information and you could check out very quickly from Shopify store to Shopify store. They've now formalized that uh, with a consumer facing app called the shop app, which also then has post-purchase uh, functionality as well. And fourth would be PayPal. So PayPal launched back in the day to facilitate secure and trusted transactions between parties on the internet. And obviously today, you can check out on virtually any website with PayPal. But all four of these, even though they're great solutions, they all have fundamental drawbacks and limitations. Amazon only works on Amazon. Apple Pay doesn't work for Android users or Windows users or anyone that's not on iOS. Shopify and the Shop app are great for Shopify, but not for everything else that you buy on the internet. And PayPal, while it is safe and secure, I gotta be honest with you, it's just a little bit clunky, that nav to a different site and come back and sometimes there's data sync issues. It's great, but it can be improved. What if you had all of that in one solution? One click shopping from Amazon, the elegant and very easy to use user experience of Apple Pay, the post purchase experience of the shop app with order tracking and returns and repurchases all in one place, and the security and safety of a trusted third party like PayPal, but without the clunkiness and friction. Well, that's what Fast is looking to bring into the world, all in one and a single easy to use solution. And look, this is awesome from a PLG standpoint because this enables 
friction removal, and ease of conversion across lots of different websites in not just e-commerce, but also it could be for SaaS companies and other things like that. But not only that, Fast itself is a PLG business and is extremely easy to onboard and extremely oriented towards speed and being fast as you'd expect, hence the name. So the last thing that I'll point to you as a call to action, perhaps, if you're a merchant, check it out, see if it's gonna work for you and improve conversion. But also, if you just wanna learn more, go to fast.co and check out this RSVP for Fast Forward. If you click through, it'll take you to the launch video and the launch experience that they hosted last week, uh, which, quite frankly, reminded me a lot of a virtual Apple launch event. It was very well branded and super impressive. Tab three. Tab three is from the Wall Street Journal and is about Patreon's recent round of financing that valued it at over a billion dollars. So the venture capital firm NEA and the public crossover investor Wellington led this $90 million round at a $1.2 billion valuation and it was announced last week. This valuation is up 2X year over year from a funding round that happened in 2019. And there's some really impressive stats listed in the article. For example, Patreon has supported over 200,000 creators and 6 million patrons, those are the supporters, over its life to date, and that has generated $2 billion of contributions to the creators. So there's a lot of impact that's happening in the creator and maker economy from Patreon. But ask any creator, and I think they'll point to the fact that Patreon does have its limitations and downsides. First, it's expensive. Patreon charges up to 15% of the contributions made to creators, which if you compare that to marketplaces that could take 30% plus in some cases, it sounds like a great deal. But when you compare that to e-commerce and payments platforms that might take one to 3%, it starts to paint a different picture in the way in which Patreon might be taking its pound of flesh. Which brings me to drawback number two, and that's the fact that creators are doing all of the hard work to create their personal brand, to attract their audience. Um, and that could take place on a podcast platform, that could be on YouTube. And then as a separate experience, audience members and supporters go to Patreon for payment and then come back to the core platform, enter a special code and get unlocked the premium content that comes with their subscription. And look, that's better than what existed before, which was please make a personal contribution to me over PayPal or obviously the old school world of uh, actual tip jar or something like that. But now that it's a number of years in and the creator economy has matured and scaled, its clunkiness is starting to show through. And that's what's leading to a new wave of creator tools coming onto the market like this one called Circle. Circle bills itself as the modern community platform for creators. And to me, this looks a lot more like Shopify for creators than it does a better version of Patreon. This can be the platform where you post your content, where you engage in discussions with your audience and where you manage ongoing relationships with your audience as well. So it's much more of that integrated platform, again, very much like what you would see for merchants on Shopify. So what's next for the creator economy? I think three things are for sure. First, we're gonna see lots more independent creators as both the trend and demand grows, but also as the tooling improves and makes it easier for people to have an on-ramp and then also a scale-up function for their creative community and their artistic efforts. Two is lots more patrons and supporters who have an appetite for this independent perspective and independent creativity. Three, because that's gonna create a big market and lots of demand, we're gonna increasingly see more and more tools and platforms to support these creators and help them engage with their audience and supporters better. This is a growing segment of the economy because media, content, and influence is being decentralized and even atomized down to the individual creator level. And this shift moves the power away from legacy media platforms and distribution channels as there's a huge growth in micro communities and niche interests and people finding their tribe online, so to speak. Well, that does it for this week on the PLG 123. Make sure to follow me on LinkedIn for more daily PLG content and stay tuned for our weekly episode drops at the PLG 123, which comes at you one tab at a time here on LinkedIn. Hope you guys are having a great week and take care.